Welcome back. This is the last chapter of the MTCNA guide. These last few videos, it will be like four or five, we'll be covering the wireless section. The reason we've left it for last is because there has been some physical components that we need to actually set up a wireless network, but all of the components are in place and we're gonna have a, a fun time setting everything up. So let's get into the video. All right, so let's try and discuss a bit of wireless theory using my good friend Paint and just discussing the theory in general. Um, I'm not going to waste your time like I see a lot. I don't want to say MTCNA trainers do this, but they tend to overcommit onto the wireless section of the MTCNA. They try and explain every portion of wireless and it's, I don't want to say meaningless, but it's actually, there is a completely different certification track for wireless on Microtech. It's called the MTC WE, wireless engineer. I know it's crazy, but that's aimed directly at figuring out exactly everything that goes into wireless, how to build links, how to become a WISP um, and maintain a wireless network on a WISP level now. Just understanding wireless as a concept versus building links, it's two different things. And I'm going to treat this as the MTCNA where we're focusing on just wireless in a broad spectrum. We're just going to set up some wireless access points and do some, some stuff on our um, main AP. All right, so let's discuss WLAN or its more common name or technical name, 802.11. So what is that exactly? I think we first need to establish what is a wireless network? What do we use wireless for? And the end result is we might have a client which could be a computer, it could be a laptop, it could be a printer, or it could even be another access point, another Wi-Fi AP that's connecting to a device like a wireless AP for network access. And the reason for that is so that we can avoid cabling. <laughs> I, I know it sounds silly, but it does come down to that. Wireless enables us a means of connecting to the network without having to use a physical cable. So in companies, if you use your wireless network effectively, you could really reduce the cost on some hardware because you won't need to put down as much cable and you can also maybe take out some elements like switches that you no longer need because you're not gonna have hundreds or thousands of points running into a switching environment. You're just going to have maybe two or so switches where all of your access points can connect onto. And then all of your clients, if they support wireless, they'll be able to connect wirelessly. So that is kind of the why of wireless. Okay, so let's dive a bit into the how. How does this all happen? So essentially with wireless networking, we're always going to see something called an access point, but this AP will essentially be sending out a radio frequency on a specific wavelength. And this is depending on the type of band that we're using. So we've got two different bands that we typically see in the networking world, which is 2.4 gigahertz. And we get five gigahertz. And these bands are just used to send out a wireless signal and broadcast an SSID. So it will send out an SSID to tell clients what they can connect to. So, hey guys, here is my signal. I'm broadcasting it on this band and I'm broadcasting it over this channel. Do you want to connect to me? And if I'm the client, I can scan for a wireless network if I've got a wireless adapter and then I can pick up that signal or that radio frequency and then I can click on the connect button. And if I require authentication, like a username and password, I can type it in and it will send those details to the access point wirelessly and then this will basically form like a little wireless tunnel on a specific channel between the access point and my client so that we can transmit data wirelessly without needing a cable. So in the gist, that is how, and we need to understand that there's various different types of bands. So 802.11 is just the, the, the general rule of the, this is wireless network, but we get different types of bands like A, B, G, A, X, all kinds of different bands. And I'm just going to navigate on the wiki page so I can show you exactly the type of different networks that you typically see when it comes to 2.4 and five gigahertz networks. And here you can see there are various different types of 
wireless frequencies or bands that people can use to connect with but it's not readily available everywhere and this also boils a bit down to regulations which i'll get in a little bit later in the video but typically for normal day-to-day -day use you might see 2.4 and 5 gigahertz for home networks and maybe small point-to-point -point links all right, so let's think about throughput whenever we are looking at these different types of spectrums or bands, depending on what you want to call them. Because we can see 802.11b, which you know is for 2.4 gigahertz, or 8.2.11a. And these are actually very old iterations of those spectrums, but you might still see them in use. But you might find very old devices like microwaves and fridges and bluetooth devices connecting um, at that lower spectrums as well but let's go on to our table here so here we've got a nice little table on wiki as well showing you exactly what the throughput speeds were throughout the years so on its initial concept for 802.11 it, which was just on 2.4 gigahertz you could do one to two megabits then they s said okay cool we're going to like play around a bit we're going to release additional um like spectrum that people can use which is the 5 gigahertz spectrum and now we start seeing 802.11 b or a so a being for your 5 gigahertz networks and b being for your 2.4 gigahertz networks and as you can see the 5 gigahertz network already allows you to do more throughput it can push more bandwidth across but it does come at a bit of an expense and i'm going to discuss this because you can come and look at these speeds yourself um, but i want to talk about um the let's say the um, trade-off that you make whenever you go for a five gigahertz network because five gigahertz does give you more throughput but it does have the expense of less coverage and that is quite important so i'm not going to say you can't use five gigahertz it's actually used very widely and it's it's, it's really good wireless spectrum to connect onto um, but don't expect that you're going to set up an access point from one end of your house and connect to a station uh, that's the other end of the house at five gigahertz uh, because you might face some signal issues because the coverage might be a bit poorer you might be better off connecting on 2.4 gigahertz towards that access point because the signal or the frequency that it's connecting over can penetrate a lot better through certain objects especially like walls and whatnot but um, five gigahertz very useful especially if you have it in a room because if your access point is in the room and you're broadcasting at five gigahertz then that is perfect that's ideal you'll, you'll definitely see people put access points um, in areas where people are that's broadcasting five gigahertz networks it might be a school like classrooms it might be office spaces it might be an airport lounge things like that you'll see definitely the five gigahertz just to broadcast to the clients and you might see your 2.4 gigahertz to connect to other access points but i'm not going to say you can't do it either way both ways work but you need to understand there are trade-offs and there are definitely issues like interference when it comes to wireless. And that's why it's so hard for me to explain wireless because I might have a great experience with it and I can explain it to you and then you're setting it up where you are and there's a, a ton of devices that's causing interference and then your experience on the wireless network will just be a lot worse because of all of those issues. All right, now I'd quickly like us to talk about channels and channel sizes and widths and all that good stuff. Uh, but this also kind of bleeds into the point of wireless and how stable it is and i'm going to just use another table here from wiki which is funny but this is actually very accurate and you can see on a wireless spectrum like 2.4 there's different frequencies that you can connect at and you can see it like has intervals of five gigahertz the whole time but what you need to notice let me see if i can just maximize this image on the image itself even though you can set up on channel one, well, channel one is actually a clean channel, but let's say if I set up on channel two and I connect at a channel width of 20 megahertz, that my channel is actually going to bleed into another clean channel. It's going to catch interference. It's going to cause issues. And that is why you might hear a lot of the times, and it's not might, you'll hear people say, hey, there's only three clean channels uh, that we can effectively use on uh, 2.4 gigahertz networks. That means if you have three access points in the same room and 
all three of them run in each of them in a clean channel that they won't interfere with each other. And it's the same with your clients. If your clients connect on that clean channel, that they won't interfere with other clients. But if there's a ton of clients connecting on the same channel, it is causing interference and that can cause stuff like slower network speeds or degradation of signal strength, um, th things like that you might see. But just be aware of it that the, you've got different channel sizes and with 2.4, it's typically um, 11 channels. If I go back, you can see on the United States, it's up to one to 11. And then different countries allow more channels, but you'll typically just see channel one, I think six and 11. Those are the channels that are considered clean, that's good to use. Whereas the others you, you might avoid because you're going to overlap into certain channels. And the same can be said for uh, five gigahertz networks. So here you can get a brief look at the frequencies that you can connect onto. And they also recommend here what you can use the spectrum or channel for. If it says indoors, it obviously means you're going to use this in your house or in an office space or something. And if it's outdoors or so, then you're, you can use that for point to point connectivity or so. But um, this also now comes on to another point, which is uh, country regulation because this is also what makes it very difficult for me and why I've been dreading making the video because each country treats wireless differently. There's a general rule of thumb with wireless, but um, what I might think is fine to do in my country might not be a good idea to do in your country because it's against the regulation. So it's fair for you to actually go and look at something like this to see what the regulations are, what is actually being allowed. So you can come here or you can look at your local wireless authority because you will have some local wireless authority in your country and you can uh, look up what their regulations are and then you can decide what type of stuff you can connect with because it might be illegal in your country to set up like a five gigahertz a band and you connect at this frequency, but that frequency they've actually licensed to a specific uh, company or customer and now you're actually doing something against the law. Uh, it's, it's very rare, but it does happen. But typically the indoors use frequencies are fine to just set up however, but um, <laughs> sorry, I, I, I realize now that I, I might make it sound very scary and setting up a wireless network shouldn't be scary and it's actually straightforward. But typically that's also why when a country imports equipment from a vendor, that that vendor limits the frequencies and spectrums that the device can connect to, especially like a home router, that it's locked to a specific frequency so you don't accidentally um, connect on something you're not supposed to. So I don't want to scare you with that. I just want to... Um, make a point of that. And that's the nice thing about MicroTik as well. And I want to point that out. When I go into a MicroTik and we're going to set up wireless, but I'm just going to show you quickly. Um, if we go into a wireless interface, you've actually got something like a frequency mode, regulatory domain, which says it will only show us the, the stuff that's within regulation. And in your country, you can actually select on MicroTik which country you're from. And it will show you the stuff that's kind of acceptable in your country for use. So that's actually very nice from MicroTech side as well. So you can select your country and you can select which regulatory domain you belong to or what options you want available to you. And then you can set up your access point or your clients and stuff accordingly. Okay, so that covers the bands. We've covered channels and we've covered the regulations. Alrighty, so this is where we will be concluding this video. This was just a quick brief overview of the theory behind wireless. In the next upcoming videos, we'll actually be configuring stuff like adding an access point, adding a client, and we'll be tuning in a few additional more settings like power settings and NV stream and all that type of stuff. This was just to get you into the rhythm of wireless. So I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.